Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey GTA 7 and welcome to the episode. In this episode, I'll be using the Mercedes A45 at Tokuro Expressway, so in this video I'll show you guys where to get the car, the setup itself, the build, and of course the delivery that I made. Everything that you need to know will be in this video. So, without no further ado, let's get straight into the video. So if you guys are curious of how to get the car, well, there's two ways to get it. One, you can win it free if you're lucky in the minigame. But if you guys want to get it right now, you can always get it at Brand Central. So here we are. We're going to click on Euro, click on Germany, and then AMG after you get to those stages. Here's where you can find the car. So as soon as the menu does load up, it'll be the very first car you see in the AMG category. Now, the car itself, pretty decent. Um, we're looking at about 518 uh, performance points as it being stocked. Uh, four wheel drive. So that's a really good plus because we know that. Four-wheel drives are pretty much a good category to have at Tokyo Expressway. Uh, the max power is about 355 horsepower, 331 pounds worth of torque. Uh, it is a turbocharger, and it is on the hefty side at around 3,400 pounds, but uh, despite that, overall pretty decently good stats. And not to mention, uh, the car itself is pretty affordable right at 64,000 credits. So whenever you get the chance to get your credits, uh, just go ahead and get the car. And just like that, you'll be able to get the car at Brand Central. So after you get the car, the next step you're going to do is now go to GT Auto and just get you a wide body modification for the car. That will be the next step you need uh, for this particular build. It's going to be just a simple 25,000 credit upgrade. So after you just get the car um, set it to wide, uh, then that'd be it for stage number two. So after you get your car oh, with a wide body kit, uh, if you guys would like to have my livery that I actually made, for, especially for this event, um, here are the key word searchers that you can search for this car, either at GT Auto or the Showcase Tent. Um, doesn't matter where you get it from. But yeah, uh, this is a very simple livery that I made specifically for Took Expressway. Now, I can actually also use it for Le Mans or any other kind of racing event, but I mainly made this livery just for Took Expressway. Um, so if you guys want to quickly look this livery up, just to save you some time, just uh, save you the time of getting the parts you need for the car from GT Auto, then there you go. Um, I really liked how it came out, even though it is pretty simple, pretty basic. Uh, but other than that, that is livery for the car, just in case you want to use it. And now here we are for the most important part, of course, is the build itself. So uh, for the full grid sheet uh, first things first as you guys can see we got ourselves sport hards as our tire compound for this car uh, suspension uh, you don't have to worry about it we're going to skip it and move on now to differential uh, where you can see we have the torque set to 5 for both the front and the rear acceleration we're going to set to 15 for the front and the rear as well uh, and for braking 20 20 and then we got the torque factoring center differential. We're going to set that to 2575, which I felt was pretty, you know, decently even throughout the whole race. Uh, for aerodynamics, it's see, down force for the front is going to be zero. The rear is going to be 150. After that, uh, make sure you have the full control computer for your ECU, and you're going to keep it at max out at 100. Fully customized racing transmission, and you're going to keep it at 310. As we move to the other part of the setup, high RPM turbocharger with anti lag system set to strong. Racing intercooler uh, for your intake and exhaust categories, make sure everything is set to racing. Racing brake and brake pads. And then, of course, a steering angle kit right here. Uh, racing clutch and flywheel, and basically anything you can grab your hands on the rest of the parts from the tuning shop for both engine tuning and for body work, as well as you'll also need for the car. And that is going to be it uh, for the setup. So there's a lot of parts involved um, in this car. Just the only thing to really worry about is just, of course, adjusting the downforce. And once you do that, then you're good to go. So as you guys can see, the car itself pretty quick uh, on the straights, not to mention. And having some really good acceleration thanks to the help of the racing transmission and the racing clutch and flywheel. Uh, as you can see, we're easily going through the field as we're actually going to be close to the top five once we approach our first breaking point or right close to it. And so, as you can see, we're going to break. Uh, we actually do have really good brakes compared to the rest of the field, so we're actually going to outbreak the Porsche. Um, unfortunately, though, we stayed in fourth gear when we should have been in third and we're going to lose that spot again. Uh, but we're going to capitalize on the Remera's mistake 
and get ourselves back to P6 and then begin our hunt to the field. And let me tell you, the car's handling is very smooth. Might be a little bit on the tight side, like it was on the last episode using the uh, Chevrolet Chevelle, but the little bit tightness understeer feeling on this car is not near as tight as the Chevelle. So there's a little bit gonna be a little bit of tightness in this car, but um, it's not going to be as strong. So as you can see, we're already sixth place. We're going to get ourselves a pretty nice move made right here up to fifth place, and then we're set our sights on the GTR, the OG Impreza, and the OG Supra as well. So we're going to make a move here right here on the GTR as we do so right there. A nice clean, simple move. Uh, the GTR is going to force itself making a mistake, slamming the wall pretty hard, uh, but we keep going. Uh, so it was a very good, decent start. As you can see, there's the leader right in front of us. And a pretty good gap, too. Um, so we're going to find ourselves in the battle for P2 uh, with the Impreza and the Supra. So here we are, heading to that very tricky right-hand turn. Um, and thankfully, we mainly stay on the drop part of the track. We all we got the move done, but we actually go a little bit wide. The Impreza really gets a good uh, exit. We go side-by-side, -side, almost making contact. Uh, but somehow, some way, we actually didn't really make any contact, so we basically stayed side by side for that last corner. But we're gonna come on top of everybody in this uh, straightaway, get ourselves P2 right as we finish up the finish line, and I want you guys to listen to how wonderful this engine sounds when it drives by. Yeah, that's another thing I like about this setup is the engine itself. The engine sounds so good uh, in this car. Just the way it sounds, it's really good. So here we are, lap two, uh, making some good grounds on the leader. So I think in this lap, we should be able to actually easily catch up with the leader. If not, try to take the lead in this race. Like I said, this car is, this car is very dialed in, very smooth, pretty much glued to the racetrack as well. Um, so this should be a little bit easier to drive than it was the Chevrolet Chevelle uh, from the last episode. As you can see, the car is just really dialed into the racetrack uh, easily, same purple in that first sector. Um, so as we get close to the building district, uh, you'll then begin to see how much faster we are compared to the race leader, especially with these very technical corners uh, coming up. Uh, but yeah, this is a really smooth Mercedes. So as we get closer and closer to leader very quickly, uh, we should be able to really get close right at that right-hander turn, I believe. And you can see we're still hitting purple, so you can see we're right there with the leader. Um, so we're close to that striking distance to actually make a move for the lead. We'll just have to be a little bit more patient and just make sure we don't make any mistakes so we won't lose any ground to the leader. And here we are on board. You can see we have the speed advantage over the leader as well, thanks to our good acceleration. We're going to break very hard into this right hand turn and we're going to go all the way down the first gear. And let me tell you, this car actually takes this right hand pretty smoothly. Um, you just have to really, you know, don't have to worry about much of that particular corner. You can just go back and throttle as fast as you can on the first gear and just shift the second gear and third and you're good to go. And you can see, just like we did in the last episode, we took the lead very quickly with authority and we'll take it right at the end of lap two. So this is a really, really good build overall. So as we get down with this lap, we're gonna fast forward to what will be lap five. This is gonna be a hot lap. So in this lap, if you guys want to, you can watch this clip and just see what this car can do uh, around this track. So I'll see you guys when we get to our pit stop.
So here we are at lap number six. Uh, we actually did a 207.731, which is pretty quick uh, for this track. So we're going to come to pit road, get ourselves just fuel only, uh, and that's going to be it uh, for our pit stop. So it's very simple. The tires are actually pretty strong. They're very durable in this particular race. Uh, the painful part, though, for fueling up, you can see it's going to be almost the full tank. Uh, so we'll have to wait a good bit uh, for fueling. But like I said, the hot lap, that right hand, that very tricky right hand turn. It seems like the car was very dialed in and has a very smooth response time uh, with that right hand turn. So very glad for that because usually that turn can be pretty tricky. Um, so here we are at the last lap, finish up the race. It's going to be a good time overall. It's going to be 26:26 overall for our time. So right below the 26:30 timeline. So overall, a very smooth, decent build. Um, so you can see, 207.731 was our fastest lap on lap 5, 26.26 was our total time, so it's pretty close to the Audi R8's time, right around there. Um, very glad though that this build actually was very smooth. So, as you guys can see, we also got the clearance bonus, and that is going to be it uh, for this particular episode. So, hopefully you guys in fact enjoyed the episode. I really enjoyed this particular build. Um, the car was a smooth throughout the whole race. Uh, so hopefully this car build combination will be a big help to you at Tokyo Expressway. Hopefully you'll grab your win or use this car for farming as well. Um, now if this car doesn't really work out for you at Tokyo Expressway, then no problem. Uh, what I recommend doing is just saving this car for the mall. Just seeing how good the car was on the streets and also in the corners. Uh, I can really picture this car being a real beast around that race as well so hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode uh hit the like button which would be highly appreciated if you guys would like to also support the channel and like what you saw today and would like to see more of this uh why not go ahead and subscribe the channel as well which i highly appreciate as well uh, i also try my best to upload daily as much as i can um so if you guys are interested and would like to check out my last episode i did which i mentioned a good bit in this episode the chevrolet chevelle build here you can click on the field right there um Another awesome build. Uh, the setup is actually is from a friend of mine, so it's not my setup, but it's his setup. So hopefully that setup or video will be a big up to you too. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of the day or night to where you might be. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.